and Jesus walked on water. There are whole books written on that. Whole books. How to walk on water. You can't stay in the boat if you are going to walk on water. And it becomes faith sermons. But Jesus did not send them or command them to walk on water. He said, get in the boat and go to the other side. Peter abandoned the primary assignment. Yes, he walked on water. But was that what he was given to do? Those who stayed in the boat and were around the boat were the ones who brought worship to him, if you read the whole story, when he entered the boat again. We can be distracted by signs, by wonders, without realizing these are the things that follow them that believe. They, begin the, they become the things that we follow. Jesus said, follow me. Who? Me. Who is the me? Jesus. We get so distracted and caught up in so many things and we stretch them up as the banners of faith. They're not necessarily so. It's because we're shallow. Now let's come to the faith of the Son of God. The kind that Paul wrote about in Galatians 2.20. The kind that was once delivered unto the saints. The ones that would not get me distracted because it's entirely focused on God. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What is the faith of the Son of God? What is it? I ask questions when I resolve things. Now, I know you know the four sources of faith. This is not a church where you come to teach garbage because the pastor and the leaders are thorough. And there's a legacy here, not of emotionalism. Do you understand me? Of real substance. I know you know that faith comes by. I can hear you. Faith comes by. And hearing by. Fantastic. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> you really, really are on the cutting edge of what God is doing. You truly understand how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now let's test how much of that we actually have and walk in. How many people in this room don't hear German? Lift up your hand if you don't hear German. Would you stand to your feet, please? I don't want to embarrass you. Many hands were lifted. Please sit down. You hear German, but you don't understand German. So when you read, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God, what he's saying is faith comes by understanding, and understanding the word of God, because until you understand it, you cannot do it. So the first thing Jesus did when he rose from the dead, Luke 24, 49, 45, then opened he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. What is the primary assignment of the pastor? I will give them shepherds after my heart who will feed them with knowledge and understanding so that they will not be dismayed, they will not be afraid, they will not lack any good thing. That's why when a good pastor prepares a good meal and he wants to teach you about this, about that, that's a pastor who does not want to take advantage of you. That's a pastor who is not asking you to just lean on him. That's a pastor who does not become a prayer contractor for you, but teaches you to pray and to stand strong. Do you understand me? Fair comes by hearing. Means understanding. You do air, not understanding the scriptures, not the power of God. The faith of the Son of God comes from understanding the Word. But also the Holy Spirit helps you. That's why you find three dimensions of faith linked to one Holy Spirit. Number one, there is faith as a gift of the Spirit. There's a supernatural impartation of faith 
to bring you to a level where God is so that you can bring down what he has offered to you. How shall this be? I know not a man. There was no faith in Mary to conceive. But she, the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. In that instant, Mary knew, oh, oh, it's something God does. Be it then unto me according to your word. That was the instance she conceived. So you have faith as a gift of the Spirit. But you have a lifestyle faith as a fruit. It's become part of your character to trust God. Why don't people trust God? Because they don't know Him. They only believe Him. And if you only believe, the devils also believe and tremble. You only trust the people you know. That's why the emphasis of the New Testament is know God. That's why the emphasis of the Old Testament is know God. Hebrews chapter 8. It's crucial to establish that here as I close. How do I access this faith of the Son of God? One, it comes when my understanding is open. So that this does not become just a story to me. It does not become just a a bulletin to me. And and, and laws and and just uh, methods and formulas. No, it comes alive. The spirit and the word come together on the inside of me. Because the spirit opens up my spirit. There's a spirit in man. But the inspiration of God gives them Understanding, Job 32, 8. When my understanding is open, the word comes alive. Do you realize, my sister, my brother, that the end result of being filled with the Holy Spirit is the end result of being filled with the word of God? Be not filled with wine where it, it is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. What's the byproduct of that? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody where where it matters in your heart that's when you're filled with the holy spirit how about being filled with the word let the word of christ dwell in you richly speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and whatsoever you do in word or deed do them unto the lord So, you see that you cannot take the spirit without the word, or the word without the spirit. It's a combination of the two that brings life. The word I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. But if we don't understand, we will just be picking and choosing and looking for what is not lost. Hebrews chapter 8. The New Testament or the New Covenant. What's it all about? Hebrews chapter number 8. Verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, Hebrews 8, 7, if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. What is this new covenant, Lord? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant. It was not that that covenant was terribly bad. It was that they did not know how to continue in it and they did not have the strength or the grace. Neither did they mix it with faith. And I disregarded them, not the covenant, the people. I disregarded them, says the Lord. But for this is the covenant that I will make, verse 10, with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Not the Lord! For all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their righteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. In that 